Today we're going to look at a concept known as demand. Demand is the first part of our study on supply and demand. Supply and demand is a concept um, that is central to economics and it, in terms of the model of supply and demand, it lays the framework for every other model that we look at and the logic of the model is is very very similar to every other model that we use. So today I want you to start off with your note packet and I would like you to think about a few items if you would that you really really want. Okay, Three things that you really really want. For instance like for me um, I would love to uh, take a trip to Hawaii. I would love to take a trip to Hawaii. Okay, um, Unfortunately at this moment, I cannot afford to go to Hawaii. I don't have the ability to do this. Now, if I had the money, would I be willing to spend my money on a trip to Hawaii? Mm, probably not. Okay, probably not. And the reason is, it's just too expensive, and I can think of other things I'd like to do with my money. In economics, because I am not willing to spend my money on this product, nor do I have the money to spend, I do not exhibit demand. Okay, so at this moment, I'd like you to go ahead and pause the recording, write down three items that you have, or the, sorry, that you want, and follow the same process here to see if you exhibit the demand for those items. Okay, hopefully you did that. All right, let's move on now to our lesson on demand. Okay, so demand. One of the first things you need to understand about demand is something known as the law of demand. And the law of demand is, is pretty simple. Um, if you think about it, you've been engaging in this practice of consumption up to this point in your life uh, for basically, what, 17, 18 years. And so this shouldn't be too counterintuitive. It should make sense. The law of demand says that when prices are low, when prices are low, that consumers tend to want to buy more products. When, again, when prices are low, consumers tend to want to buy more products. So when prices are low, people buy more. You go into a store, you see the prices have dropped, you buy more stuff. Now, because these two forces are working in opposite directions, we refer to this as an inverse relationship. Inverse relationship. Again, as prices go down, we buy more, or as prices go up, we buy less. This is known as an inverse relationship. In math, we call it a negative relationship. And the relationship is between, again, price, that is the price of a product, and the quantity demanded, that is how much we will buy of a product. Let's define quantity demanded here for a second. The quantity demanded of a product refers specifically to the actual amount that a consumer will buy at various price points. And if you think about it, in a market system, prices have a major influence on the amount of stuff that we will buy at any given time. As a matter of fact, sometimes you may even buy things based on the price. If the price becomes too high, you won't buy it. Or if it drops, you will buy it. Anyway, the law of demand, again, points out this very important um, intuitive notion that when prices rise, we buy less. When prices fall, we buy more, called an inverse, an opposite, or a negative relationship. Now let's look at an example here. Uh, of the change in quantity demanded. And I'm going to use our buddy here uh, that we've seen for many years, well, I've seen for many years, and maybe you've watched on TV. Uh, I'm just a big toasty cinnamon bun. Okay, Homer Simpson. We know Homer likes to, to uh, engage in several activities on his show, but he definitely likes to eat. Yummy! Okay, so ice cream cones. When ice cream cones are priced at $3.50, Homer will consume two, let's just say per week. Now, what happens when the price falls? Well, when the price falls, in your mind, you're probably thinking, well, now Homer can afford to buy more. And so he does. He buys more ice cream cones. Well, what's, what's going to happen when the price goes back, goes back up to $3.50? Well, Homer's now going to consume less. And that's just, again, pointing out the notion of the law of demand. Now, the cool thing about demand and the law of demand and all this stuff is that we can actually quantify. We can jot it down in a table form and then graph it. All right, so let's point out a couple of different ideas here re reflective of the demand concept. Okay, you can see in front of you here you have a table. All right, we actually refer to these as schedules. Now, if you think about a schedule for your class schedule, like your school schedule, 
on that schedule you have your the class that you're going to, the teacher that's in it, the time, the classroom, all of those important details. Well, in this schedule, this schedule we have the price of the product and the quantity demanded at all those given price points. So a demand schedule, like the one on the left, represents all of the different price points, the price of ice cream, in this case, and the quantity demanded at these price points. In other words, how much will Homer Simpson buy as the price falls and how much will he buy as the price rises? So notice here this inverse relationship. At high prices, he'll buy very little. At low prices, he'll buy a lot. Now, if we want to take and accumulate all of the different people in a particular area, let's say all of the people that live in Homer Simpson's neighborhood or all the people in, in Glynn County or all the people in the United States, well, then we're talking about what's called a market demand schedule. We're talking about the consumption of all consumers, all uh, customers in that area. And notice the numbers are bigger here because of that reason. Okay, so we've talked about the demand schedule, we've talked about the, the market demand schedule. Now, let's talk about the demand curve. The demand curve is essentially a way for us to understand how to graphically represent the demand schedule. Okay, so the demand curve, what is it? Again, it graphically represents the demand schedule. So the demand curve, if you notice, when we look at these points, okay, is downward sloping. So from left to right, from left to right, along the, uh, or along this curve, is a downward sloping notion. Now let's think about why. Notice again, when the price is very high, let's say the price is at $3, well, nobody is willing to buy. Again, when the price is high, we get closer along this x-axis to the y-axis. At $3, no one is willing to buy. As we move down in price, down in price, down in price, we actually move further and further and further away from the y-axis. And so this is an illustration, an indication of this notion of the, of the uh, law of demand. As prices rise, people buy less. As prices fall, people buy more. And then we have sort of points all along this curve to represent uh, the various price points and what people are willing to buy or not buy. Okay, so that's our lesson on demand. Hopefully that is uh, clear and intuitive, and we'll talk more about this in class.